So at this point, the most common thing to do is take a rag and shove it in here. I got some of these, so I'm going to use this. This is a four inch gripper. This is by Odie. This is a 33403. And this is a three inch gripper. This is also by Odie 33402. I have a three inch drain, so I'm going to be using the three inch, but you might have a four inch. Probably not. Most of them are three inch. I got this wing nut loose. I'm going to drop it here and tighten it up. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on here because I don't want to expand anything. I just want to seal off any of the gases so I have just a small amount of pressure. But I'm mostly concerned about dropping anything in there and clogging up my sewers. So don't want that to happen. Alright, so now for the complicated part for my toilet. My toilet is a big bowl. So it comes in like this. And this valve either needs to be directly in the center and about 10 inches up or 10 inches off to the side. So 10 inches from the side up here. If I leave it right here, the toilet will literally crush it. So I can't let that happen. So I'm going to have to move this valve over here. Okay, since I'm going to be cutting into the wall, the first thing I want to do is turn off the water supply. And the bathroom I'm working on is above this faucet. So if I turn on the water here, it's going to drain out the line. And that way I don't have to worry about there being any pressure upstairs. All right, so I'm going to start out just by cutting around the area and I'll see what is actually behind this wall. Looks like they used a pretty simple nail on stub out right here so so the pecs came down and then they screwed that into the stud right here and then it stubbed out right there first thing i have to do is i have to get this off now supposedly with these uh all you have to do is pull and spin to the left before i do that i'm going to make sure there isn't any water in this line which it probably is going to be a little bit all right so i've got it under the valve i'm going to open this up there we go. So there's a little water in there. So now I'm going to pull and twist and see what happens. Okay. All right. So that came right off. At this point, it's a good idea to have one of these. This is just a cap that you can push on. So if in an emergency you had to turn the water on to the house, you can just take this, shove it onto that PEX, and you'll be able to turn the water back on. Then they also make a tool that you can put on the back and you can pop it back off. So these are reusable, but you don't want to use them too many times. They do make these for the uh, angle stops and for lots of different things. I'm going to be using a crimp on angle stop because I, I prefer not having the push to connect style for, for anything that's going to be permanent. But for emergencies, it's good to have one of these on hand. All right, this is called a flow tight connection, and I don't even think they make these things anymore, but because I broke it, I'm definitely not going to be reusing it. Cut this ring and pop that off. And I can pull off the cover. What I'm going to be looking at doing is I'm going to be using one of these. Hold Tight is the brand that makes these things, and this is a 103187. So the idea here is I'm going to find two studs, and I'm going to screw down that and then I can move this connection anywhere I want to. Now according to the manual for the toilet I need it to be 10 inches from the center and about five and a half inches up. So five and a half, five and a half is down here about so this one's a little high but I think I might just go with that height and then 10 inches is right about there. So I can be a little bit further away, but I definitely don't want to be any closer. About here somewhere. So I think that's 10 inches off center. That's a little further. 
about a quarter, but that's fine. And then five and a half up is down here, but I think I'm gonna go with that same area. So I want the stub out to be approximately where that mark is. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be close. What I believe is happening is that this line is coming out, coming down, and then coming out. So uh, if that's what's happening, great, because that means I'm gonna be able to pull this back and I won't have to make a connection onto here and add picks to it. And that, if I have to do that, that's fine, but the more connections you have, the more potential points of failure. So I'm gonna try to just uh, bend this and get this thing ready. So the first thing I wanna do is give myself a little bit more room to work with. stud over it's basically right here yeah it's almost right behind this guy okay so I, I decided I'm gonna try to hit this stud so I'm gonna bring this over and continue cutting it there material that I can screw in right here. But now it's easier to see what I've actually got. So I've got this outlet that goes to the wall in the bedroom and I've got uh, this PEX. <laughs> Why did they nail it in like that? Uh, okay, so the PEX line's going up, coming across and coming down and then going through the floor underneath. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bend it that way so that I can screw it to the wall right to this stud and then I'll have it come across and I'll screw it right here. So I need one of these holes to line up at 10 inches. So I need probably this one to go right here. So I need to bend about, looks like two and a half, about two inches. All right, so I'm gonna go with two and a quarter, which is uh, this guy right here. I'm going for a little bit deeper than that. drywall you can see I got the brown on this side and I got the blue on this side you have to get this type of drywall if you're gonna be working in a bathroom because this is somewhat waterproof and it's got like a tar built into it and you want to make sure this side is facing out I want to do this before I get the stub out so that I get it proper uh, sizing so I'm gonna cut this a little bit big This is my template.
We're going to be using these uh, hold right PEX turnouts. These are for a half inch. This is 10 inches right here. There we go. Now I can kind of slide it around however I need it. And I'm looking at about four inches, just a little past it. using these uh, fast and tight drywall screws. I do want this to be flush with uh, this stud. So we are moved. This is seven and three eighths. From the side, seven and three eighths. It's going to be about nine centimeters. Right there is right where I should be drilling for this. That should be plenty of room. So I'm going to use a seven eighths bit. This is a Bosch hole saw. There we go. That should fit like so. Now I'm just going to try to clean some of this up so we get a nice flat surface. And I'm using Easy Fill Light Repair Putty. So I'm going to add some of this. Close the bag up, we'll be able to save the rest of this for later, and add water. And this stuff will set in 20 minutes. I'll just get the mix up. definitely be doing touch-up work on this. But while that's working, we can put this back on. So, this is a PEX crimper. These are PEX rings. And this is a new angle valve. So it's a quarter turn. There we go. Right now it's open, and that's closed. I accidentally got the wrong type. I got one that plugs in and then it comes out the other side. Now that's okay except that it doesn't give me a lot of room because I'm gonna have to attach the the line here and then bend it way back to go to the toilet. I want it to come out the side. I'm trying to cut this tube so that it's a little straighter. And I'm going to stick on this ring. And I want to get
get that centered. So when I push this on, these uh, these two little ribs will be crimped against the pegs. So that looks pretty good right there. And the important part here is when you crimp it, you want to make sure you're crimping it perfectly perpendicular. You don't want to be crimping it at a slight angle. So I got a go no gauge and I'm looking for half inch. It fits on but it doesn't go all the way to the end. Right, if that sunk all the way to the end, you'd be in trouble. So that's a perfect crimp. So this is closed, this is open. I'm gonna close it, I'm gonna go turn the water on. Okay, the water should be on. Water's on, and I got no leaks coming out of here, so that's good. If you want to know how to clean these putty knives, just dump them in water and uh, all that putty will come right off. This is definitely going to be hidden by the toilet. Oh, this looks pretty good. This is just uh, painter's tape or gaffer's tape. It's good because you can peel it right back off and it won't cause any damage. And this is Orange Peel Wall Texture by Homax. So there's a dial back here where you can adjust the, uh, the strength and then you just press the trigger. And I did notice that if you press it a little bit, you get a much different texture than if you just crush it. So I'm gonna try to just crush it. All right, so I'm gonna let that sit. I don't wanna put on too much at once because if you do, it'll start running down because it'll, it'll all collect together and it will give you a very ugly texture. So I'm gonna let that sit. I'll come back and I'll hit it again. All right, so we are starting to get some texture. Some of the big bubbles kind of died down a little bit. That's yeah, starting to look pretty good. This is going to be pretty low, pretty out of the way, but I do want it to look good. I think this is going to be my last coat. Yeah, I won't be going any further than that, so next up is going to be paint. So I took a piece of the drywall with the paint on it over to Lowe's and I got this bucket of paint matched, hopefully matched. And it looks like it's still fairly well mixed. I'm going to be using this wall brush, little Amazon Basics one. Simple but effective. I waited an hour, but it looks like it's still a little wet, so I'm going to leave that for a little while longer. But while that's happening, I can replace this valve, so I'm going to do that. And they do make tools for cutting this. It looks like this. But the problem is this won't fit in there long enough to get to the back, so that's not going to work. The only way to really get this guy off is to cut it. But I'm going to try to cut it as close to the fitting as I possibly can, just to preserve as much of the pecs as I can. 
It's actually a good thing that uh, I have to put a new one on anyway because I, I got to put the scooching on. And this is the one I should have got. The inlet's here and the outlet is out here. I'm just going to do it the same way, but on the compression ring. And I'm going to do a quick measurement to make sure that after it's pressed all the way in, I'm going to hit two barbs. Looks good. Press it in. Make sure we're crimping the whole thing and that we are parallel. Check with the go no go. Yeah, we are good. So we close that and then we have my girlfriend turn the water on. Okay, go ahead and open up the, the bottom one all the way. Okay. Okay, and that's it. Thank you. Okay. Alright, bye. Love you. Yeah. So we got water and we got no leaks. And then for the old fitting, this is where I can use these uh, compression ring removers. So I just fit it over the end. I'm going to squeeze and that blade is going to cut into the, uh, the compression ring. Alright, got it on one side. And I got it on the other. And you can see as I bit that one, it just kind of falls apart. There we go. Let's make sure that I didn't cut into this fitting. And I did not, so I can reuse this.